This is the sixth um, installment in the Mimer that we've been learning about Rosh Hashanah that was said by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson, in the year 1986. Tov Shin Mem Vav. Here it is. And now we've been learning about what exactly happens on Rosh Hashanah based on the uh, sentence said by Isaiah that on that day, namely we're talking about the future redemption, <clears throat> the a great shofar will be sounded and all of the uh, the pushed away Jewish people from all over the world will come to the holy mountain in Jerusalem and bow down to God. So what does this mean and what is this big, there's going to be a big shofar that will be sounded. What is this great shofar? So let's, we learned that the shofar gives God pleasure. And that this pleasure began when Adam, the first man, start, began to serve God. That's what Adam was created for. And that's why Rosh Hashanah is the day that Adam was created. The sixth day of creation. So, and we said that Rosh Hashanah, that we pray, the prayers we pray, one of the prayers is written by the uh, Anshe Knesset Gadola, by the men of the Great Assembly, that Rosh Hashanah is a, a remembrance for the first day. So let's continue and read this. Ha'ach, but, Afapikin nevertheless, Omer it says, Zikaron liyomar Rishon, that Rosh Hashanah is a memory for the first day. Shayom the Rosh Hashanah, the day of Rosh Hashanah, but call Yom Hashanah every year, who is Rag Zikron, it's only a remembrance, Bilvad alone, the Yom Rishon, for the first day. Now what happened on the first day? The first day, we're referring to the first Rosh Hashanah, Adam was created. Adam was created totally from God's kindness. We're never going to have another thing like that. But God showed us such kindness that he created the whole world from nothing it's a tremendous kindness for absolutely no reason keep Rosh Hashanah Rishon on the first Rosh Hashanah how you call all this this level of God's pleasure in other words God had enough pleasure or projected pleasure that he was going to get from the world that he created the world on his own for absolutely no reason it was pleasure that God, God got from his essence. Ad la siya, until the lowest world. Asiya refers to the lowest of the four worlds or dimensions of creation. The upper worlds are where the angels are and different levels of godliness. But Asiya is this physical world. This physical world was actually created. That's how the Bible starts off. In six days. On the sixth day, man was created. And man was the secret of creation. But God did this all himself. Mitzad atzmo on his own. Why did he do it? Why did God create the world? Ki because chafetz chesed hu. God desires to do kindness. Or we can say from just from pure love. God wanted to express his love. So he created the world. Same thing now, right? God is creating the world now from love. Yes, every single second. That's why the Jews are called the chosen people to tell the non-Jews how much God loves them, it creates them. But now it's not the same thing. Masha'in came, which is not the case, Akshav, now, now, Be'eteruta Dilatata, this is an abbreviation, Be'eteruta Dilatata, with an arousal from below, Talia Milta, the whole thing depends. In other words, God on the first day, on the fifth, sorry, on the sixth day when he created man, he said, up to now I've done it all on my own, from now on, the world is put into your hands. Al yudei by means of the service, to call kochot the nefesh, and man has to serve God now with all of the powers of his soul, all of his abilities, all of his talents, entire personality, entire potential. The koach hatainug befrat, and especially our power of pleasure. <clears throat> man can get pleasure. And this power of pleasure, usually a person says, that's for me. 
It's my private business. When I go home, close the doors, then I'm the boss. A bad time to say, no, God is the boss. This is a big novelty, and God gets pleasure from this. That's why God created man, for this novelty. The zehu, this is, ma what? Sham shacha, that the blessings now drawn down from God, achshav now, nasit are made al yadeh by means of avodah, service. Now we have to serve God. You could ask, what does it mean to serve God? God is not lacking anything. We have to bring him a cup of coffee. What do we have to do? God is infinite. He doesn't need our service. The answer is, you're right, he doesn't need our service, but God decided that he does, that he wants it, and that he gets pleasure from it. That's called service, avodat Hashem. To the point where we pray to God that we should avdacha be'emet, that we should serve God in truth, really. In truth means with all of the powers of our soul, from Aleph, the first letter, to Tuf, to the last letter of our being. Not so easy, especially because we don't see God. We can just understand that there is such a thing. And there are people called Sadiqim that they do feel the oneness of God all the time. And the first beginning service of such a person is Adam, who was such a person who felt God all the time. And he said, sounded the shofar, Tikiat Shofar, the blast of the shofar. Call Pashut is a simple blast. A simple sound, that has to come from the inside of the heart. It's not just enough that you make a shofar sound, that you know how to blow a, a shofar, like a trumpet. You can get a, a good uh, jazz trumpetist, trumpeter, and he can learn how to blow to sound the shofar. No. First of all, it has to be a Jew. The Jews are commanded. But secondly, secondly even if it's a Jew, it has to be with all of his heart, to the creator of the universe, sounding off and announcing, there is a creator, and I am a creation, and God is the king, and I am the servant. Call a panimi, it's called you calling out to God with an inner voice. And especially, and together with this, together with this feeling of your heart, of total devotion to your creator. I mean, we owe him everything. He's creating us every instant from love. With this feeling of trying to repay God a little bit, return what we owe Him. By the way, that's the idea of tshuva, means to return. Just returning the debt we owe God, this feeling accompanied with this is the feeling in our heart with which we blow the shofar, we sound the shofar. Shel behema davka. And what is the shofar? The shofar is of an animal. Now, you might think that if you want to express your humanness and express your thanks to God for creating you, so you should use something more human, like intellect, write a beautiful song, even dance a dance, a poem, a formula, solve some sort of tremendously deep idea, devote it to God. No. The way God wants us to, to serve Him, and God, He invented this, is to take a ram's horn, a horn, from an animal, bechinat behemiot vagashmiot, namely animalistic and physicalness. The low ode, and not only just a ram's horn, which is animal, ela shakaran a shofar from the horn of a shofar, the, the, the horn of an animal, it has to be talush, it has to be separated from the animal. By means of this, it is separated, the life, this the horn is not even part of an animal anymore, it's been separated, and its life is being separated, and it becomes like a mineral. It becomes like a rock. Why do we do this? To show that we are using the highest aspects of man, our heart, our love, our appreciation, and expressing it to God through the lowest aspects of the world, hamshachat bechinat penimut, drawing the innerness of our heart and the innerness which arouses the innerness of God's heart, lamata below, 
we begin it behemiot into our animal soul and even lower into our domain, into the, our body, and even into the world around us. That this world is called Tachton, the lowest world, She'en Tachton Lamata Mimeno, that there's nothing lower than it. Now, a lot of people, spiritual people, a lot of religions are based on the idea that we this world is just a testing ground and we have to get out of here as fast as possible. And the less you have to do with this world, the more spiritual you are. Judaism says this is a good point, but there's another level. It's true you have to be removed from the world, but you have to bring this removal, this holiness that you've achieved, and bring it into the physical world. And this can only be done through the Torah. Only the Torah tells you what the Creator Himself wants to have done with His creation. Al Yudezeh, by means of this, by means of sounding the shofar with all of your heart, and bringing this into a physical expression, poiling this affects gam lamayla also above by God, hamshacha a drawing down bechinas penimut the innerness tainug of pleasure, but call in the whole seder hishtal shalut the whole entire chain of creation. The entire chain of creation. This is referring to all of the spiritual worlds. In Kabbalah. And the teachings of Chabad Hasidut also explain these ideas of Kabbalah in a way that's practical, that will arouse our love and appreciation and our fear of the Creator. And this whole order of creation, spiritual creation, is called the order of Hishtalshlis, the order of the chain of creation. Starting from the highest worlds, which are even above the angels, into the angels, and etc., which will be explained in a different time but not now. Suffice it to know that God created all of this on Rosh Hashanah. He created the whole entire world, all the worlds, on the six days of creation. Odd until, but, and we bring this blessing down also to the angels, also to all the spiritual levels, until the Olam Asiyah, until the physical world of Asiyah, this physical world, the world of action, a takhton that's low, she ain't takhton lamata mimeno, that there's nothing lower than this physical world. Why? Because this world, we can we don't feel God, and we can even deny that God exists. It's obvious in this world, seemingly, that God, there is no such thing as a creator. The world exists on its own. And there's great scientists that even try to prove it. That's what it means that this day now that we are celebrating, we're going to be celebrating in a few days, is a remembrance for the first day. Shayom Rosh Hashanah, that the day of Rosh Hashanah, B'chal Shana, every year, who is only Zikaron. It only reminds us of what happened on that first day, back then, 5,776 years ago. The Biyoma Rishon, that back then, Hayataham Shachau, the revelation of God, the drawing down of God, the creation of the world was Mitzad Ki Chafetz Chesedu. It was pure God's kindness. The Teva Hatov Laitiv, that the good, that the nature of good, which God is good, Laitiv, to do good. Like it said, Adam is the only person that was born without an umbilical cord. His father was God. He knew of God's goodness every second. Achshab now, hurach zikron. But now it's only just a remembrance and a dogma, something like that first day when God's goodness shined. Ki avodad, the ki shofar, that the blowing of the shofar that we sound now, hirak lezkor, it's only to remember oto God, Allah chesed on the great kindness that he made when he created the world. Shekavar saw that he made b'techilat abriah. Now we can say, God, listen, maybe we've messed everything up, but remember, you created the world from kindness. Do the same thing now. Mitzad, because chafetz chesed, because God loves kindness. Tahagam, da'avoda, even though that now our service bad through to dilatate and arousal from below. Eina, it is not, God, it does not reach to the essence of God like God did in the beginning when He created the world. Mikol makom, nevertheless, al yadeh, by means of shemaz kirim, that we remind lefanov before God, Yisbari, blessed be He, et tachesed, the tremendous kindness and love that He had in the beginning, bechilat abriah, mit orarim, this arouses, shetum shach, that it will be drawn down again, this same thing every year, as we'll continue in the next installment.